So this is the next little project for uh, isolation. In uh, 2001, my wife and I spent six months touring around Europe and we captured it all on this marvellous little $3,300 Australian device at the time, a Sony TRV-11E. Uh, a fantastic little PAL video camera uh, that remarkably still works. Absolutely amazing. It does come up with errors occasionally, but if you fiddle with it, uh, it comes, uh, it seems to uh, come around and behave itself. And what I found was that some of these old tapes were basically getting audio dropouts, which is a common problem. So I've Googled it, and basically it looks like I need to clean the heads to stop these audio dropouts. So I'm going to have a go at doing that. I don't have a tape cleaning head, they're about $50, $60, so I'm going to try uh, using some YouTube reviews, try one of these little chamois uh, CCD swabs that I originally bought for my digital SLR, which at the time was a D200 and is still a Nikon. So here's one, we'll see how we go. Full day 136, and boy, is this the life! We've just come down from the mountain and I'm having a lovely hot chocolate. So what I'm trying to do here is what everyone else tries to do, which is to show you uh, all of the moving parts. So that in there is the drum with the rotating head on it. And then the little capstan pillars uh, come out and wrap the tape around around the, uh, the head. So it works exactly like a VCR, just in miniature. So the idea is to not use a cotton Q-tip, because they live, uh, leave little uh, remnants of fibres on the head, which apparently is really bad for it. And I'm also uh, told don't use a cleaning tape because they're extremely abrasive. Uh, and also don't use uh, isopropyl alcohol, which I've got and I am going to use uh, because I don't have anything else. So this is the weapon of choice, isopropyl alcohol, and it does say it contains 100% isopropyl. So apparently you can get ones with mixtures in them that aren't very good. Now this is a CCD swab that has been used before. Um, essentially I'm going to have a bit of blind faith and assume that it's clean and I'm going to give this a bit of a crack and if it doesn't work I do have a mate that's got a cleaning tape that he's prepared to post to me and I'll try that uh, as a second option uh, and also if I can't get inside the gizzards of the camera I'm going to um, dismantle the mechanism and pull uh, all of this outside componentry off. So you can see that I can get my, if I can find it, get my little swab in there and you can see that I can turn the head but I can't really get any contact and you've got to really go with the drum direction which is counterclockwise. Um, you can't rub up and down like that so I think I don't have a choice I'm gonna to have to dismantle this thing. Alright, got my trusty jeweler's screwdriver kit and I haven't done this in a very long time, not since I bought the camera. Then I've got to try and work out how to get inside these little ones in here that you probably can't see. There we go. Um, and also there's a ribbon cable down there. These top ones were pretty simple to get out, as was a screw in there, but this one is a little bit tricky, so I've had to take the head off my screwdriver and I've got to twist it by hand like that and it is slowly coming out. So when that screw comes out this mechanism which is quite a little bit floppy actually it becomes loose and the door just folds down but you can see that there's still that ribbon cable there that has to be uh, considered and, and really protected so this also gives a much much better view of the head and of the mechanism. I've just modified this uh, cotton bud or q-tip because uh, I don't want to put you can see all the fibers hang off the end of that so I've just put a rubber band around it because I need to get some sort of clutch or friction onto the head to rotate it like that without actually having any finger grease from me or any uh, fibers from the cotton wool bud. 
So that seems to be working pretty well, so I'll just give that a couple of rotations and I'm going the wrong way. It's meant to go counterclockwise apparently. I'm absolutely no expert. I mean it does look absolutely whisper clean. At a guess, I bought this camera in uh, 2000, 2001 maybe, so bang on 20 years old, 19 years old, and it's probably at a guess done about between 30 and 50 hours of work. So I don't know how long they're meant to last. Um, it's certainly glitchy, but you know, the insides look really, really clean. I have given it a, um, uh, given the, rotated the drum around and, and given it a really good clean with isopropyl alcohol and my little chamois CCD swab here. So I'm gonna reassemble and see if I'm still getting those audio dropouts. So this camera also featured a um, 640 by 480 still resolution. You could get the next model up, which was 1024 by 768, one megapixel. Can you imagine? So that's the little slot there. And yes, that is a four megabyte card. So it goes in there, and bang, you can take still pictures. So there's a little photo button at the top, and away you go. This is fantastic. This is the Zell Van. Where all the troglodytes lived. This is fantastic. This is the Zell Valley in Cappadocia. Where all the troglodytes lived. Fantastic. This is the Zell Valley in Cappadocia, where all the troglodytes lived. Hi, this is very exciting. I'm the only Turkish carpet shop in Turkey. Follow me. What are the odds? We've come from Sydney, Sydney 2000. We landed in Athens Airport, which was of course Athens 2004. And now the next airport we're in is Istanbul. And they've got an Olympic 2008 campaign going. The place is just beautiful, it's really lovely and um, 